Welcome back, welcome back, chapter four. The first pageant rehearsal, sorry, page 53, if you have your books out, the first pageant rehearsal was usually about as much fun as a three-hour ride on the school bus, and just as noisy and crowded. The rehearsal, though, was different. Everybody shut up and settled down right away for fear of missing something awful that the Herdmans might do. They got there ten minutes late, sliding into the room like a bunch of outlaws about to shoot up a, a saloon. Now that's what you would call a bar and restaurant in the old days out west, the saloon. Think about like uh, Buffalo Wild Wings if you've ever been there. When Leroy passed Charlie, he knuckled in behind the ear and one little primary girl yelled, Gladys went by, when Gladys went by. But Mother had said that she was going to ignore everything except blood. And since the primary kid wasn't bleeding and neither was Charlie, nothing happened. Mother said, and here's the Herdman family. We're glad to see you, which was probably the biggest lie ever said right out loud in the church. Imogene smiled. The Herdman smiled. We called it. Imogene smiled. The Herdman smiled. We call it. Sly and sneaky. And there they sat. The closest thing to criminals that we knew about. And they were going to represent the best and most beautiful. No wonder everybody was so worked up. Mother started to separate everyone into angels and shepherds and guests at the end, but right away she ran into trouble. Who were the shepherds? Leroy Herman wanted to know. Where did they come from? So now we're getting into the really good part. Remember, we here at Garden Homes, we know all about Jesus, and our job is to tell other people about Jesus. And now somebody asks, and that's our opportunity. Here it comes. Ollie Herman didn't even know what a shepherd was, or anyways, that's what he said. What was the inn? Claude asked. What's an inn? It's like a motel, somebody told him, where people go and spend the night. What people? Claude asked. Jesus? Oh, honestly, Adelis Wendelkin grumbled. Jesus wasn't even born yet. Mary and Joseph went there. Why? Ralph asked. What happened first? Imogene hollered at my mother. Begin at the beginning. That really scared me because the beginning was the book of Genesis where it said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And if we were going to have to start with the book of Genesis, we'd never get through. The thing was, the Herdmans didn't know anything about the Christmas story. If you don't know anything about the Christmas story, this might be the best place for you to be, church. They knew that Christmas was Jesus' birthday, but everything else was news to them. The shepherds, the wise men, the star, the stable, the crowded inn. It was hard to believe. At least it was hard for me to believe. Alice Wendelkin said she didn't have any trouble believing it. How would they find out about the Christmas story? She said they don't even know what a Bible is. Look at Gladys. Look what Gladys did to the Bible last week. While Imogene was snitching money from the collection plate in my class, Gladys and Ollie drew mustaches and tails on all the disciples in the primary grade illustrated, that means picture, Bible. They never went to church in their whole life till your little brother told them we got refreshments, Alice said. And all you ever hear about Christmas in school is how to make ornaments out of aluminum foil. So how would they know the Christmas story? She was right, she meaning Alice Wendelkin. Of course, they might have read about it, but they never read anything except amazing comics. And they might have heard about it on TV, except Ralph paid 65 cents for their TV at a garage sale, and you couldn't see anything on, a, on it unless somebody held on the antenna. Even then, you couldn't see much. The only other way for them to hear about the Christmas story was from their parents, and I guess Mrs. Herman never got around to it before. Mr. Herman never got around to it before he climbed onto the railroad train. And it was pretty clear that Mrs. Herman had given up even trying to tell them anything so they just didn't know and mother said she had better begin by reading the christmas story from the bible now if you don't know this is located it's located in a lot of the gospels but the gospel of luke is the one that you hear most often this was a pain in the neck for most of us because we knew the whole thing backwards and forward and never had to be told anything except for who we were supposed to be and where we were supposed to stand Joseph and Mary, his exposed wife, that means engaged or going to be his wife, married, being great with child, pregnant, yelled Ref Herman. Well, that stirred things up. All the big kids began to giggle, and all the little kids wanted to know what was so funny, and mother had to hammer on the floor. 
with a blackboard pointer. That's enough, Ralph, she said, and went on with the story. I don't think it's very nice to say Mary was pregnant, Alice whispered. But she was, I pointed out. In a way, though, I agreed with her. It sounded too ordinary. Anybody could get pregnant. Great with child sounded better for Mary. I'm not supposed to talk about people being pregnant. Alice folded her hands in her lap and pinched her lips together. I'd better tell my mother. Tell her what? That your mother is talking about things like that in church. My mother might not want me to be here. I was pretty sure she would do it. She wanted to be Mary, and she was so mad at mother. I knew, too, that she would make it sound worse than it was when it was, and Mrs. Wendelkin would get madder than she already was. Mrs. Wendelkin didn't even want cats to have kittens or birds to lay eggs, and she wouldn't let Alice play with anybody who had two rabbits. But there wasn't much I could do about it except pinch Alice, which I did. She yelled, Ouch! And Mother separated us. She made me sit beside Zimogene and sent Alice to sit in the middle of the baby angels. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy to sit next to Imogene after all. I spent my whole life staying away from Imogene, but she didn't even notice me. Not much, anyways. Shh, be quiet. What was that she said? I want to hear her. This is Imogene talking. I couldn't believe it. Among the other things, the Herdmans were famous for not, for never sitting still and never paying attention to anyone, teachers, parents, their own, or anybody else's. The truant officer, the police, yet here they were, eyes glued on my mother and taking in every word. Isn't this awesome? These kids are hearing about the word of God. What's that? They would yell whenever they couldn't understand the language and when mother read about there being no room in the inn, Imogene's draw job, and she sat up in her seat. My goodness gracious, she said. Not even for Jesus? I saw Alice pushing her lips together, so I knew that was something else Mrs. Wendelkin would hear about, swearing in church. Well, now, after all, Mom explained, nobody knew the baby was going to turn out to be Jesus. You said Mary knew, Ralph said. Why didn't she tell them? I would have told them, Imogene put in. Boy, would I have told them. What was the matter with Joseph? That he didn't tell them. He, her pregnant and everything? She grumbled. What was that they laid the baby in, Leroy asked? The manger. Here's the, we need this one for later, so remember this definition. It's that like a bed? Why would they have a bed in a barn? That's just the point, Mother said. They didn't have a bed in the barn, so Mary and Joseph had to use whatever there was. What would you do if you had a new baby and no bed to put him in? We put Glad's in the bureau drawers, Imogene volunteered. Well, there you are, Mother said, blinking a little. You didn't have a bed for Gladys, so you had to use something else. Oh, we had a bed, Ralph said, only Ollie was still in it and he wouldn't get out. He didn't like Gladys. Gladys, his eyebrow, he elbowed Ollie. Remember how you didn't like Gladys? I thought you were pretty smart. I thought that was pretty smart of Ollie not to like Gal Gladys right off the bat. Anyway, Mother said, Mary and Joseph used a manger. A manger is a large wooden feeding trough for animals. What was the wadded up clothes, Claude wanted to know? The what, Mother said? You read about it. She wrapped them up in wadded up clothes. That's kind of funny that she thought that because sometimes it sounds like that. It's actually swaddling, swaddling clothes. Mother said, long ago people used to wrap their babies very tightly in a big piece of material so they couldn't move around. It made the babies feel cozy and comfortable. I thought it probably just made the babies mad. Till then I didn't know what swaddling clothes were either. And they sounded terrible. So I wasn't too surprised when Imogene got all excited about that. You mean they tied him up and put him in a feed box, she said? Where was the child welfare? The child welfare was always checking up on the herdmans. I'll bet if the child welfare had found Gladys all tied up in a bureau of drawers, they would have done something about it. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, Mother went on. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And Shazam! Gladys yelled. <laughs> flinging her arms out and smacking the kid next to her accidentally. What, Mother said? Mother never read Amazing Comets. Out of the black night with horrible vengeance, the mighty Marvel! I don't know what you're talking about, Gladys, Mother said. This is the angel of the Lord who comes to the shepherds in the fields and... 
out of nowhere, right, Gladys says? In the black night, right? Well, Mother looked unhappy. In a way. So Gladys sat back down, looking very satisfied, as if it was at least one part of the sto Christmas story that might make sense. I kind of like that part. Shazam! So Gladys sat back... Oh, sorry. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Mother went on, reading, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, That's you, Leroy, Ralph said, and... Claude and Ollie, so pay attention. What does it mean, wise men? Ollie wanted to know. Were they like school teachers? Yeah, us school teachers are so smart. I love this part of the story, too. No, dumbbell, Claude said. It means like President of the United States. Mother looked surprised and a little bit pleased, like she did when Charlie finally learned the timetables up to five. Well, that's very close, Claude. She said, actually, they were kings. Well, it's about time, Emma Jean muttered. Maybe they'll tell the innkeeper where to go and get that baby out of the barn. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. You probably already know what's going to happen now. They're going to be like, what are those things? Because they sound kind of crazy. What's that stuff? Leroy wanted to know. Precious oils, mother said, and fragrant resins. Now, resins are like lotions. Oil, Imogene hollered. What kind of cheap king hands out oil for presents? You get better presents from the firemen. Sometimes the Herman's got Christmas presents at the firemen's party. But the Santa Claus always had to feel around the package to make sure they weren't getting bows and arrows or dart guns or anything like that. Imogene always got sewing cards or jigsaw puzzle, and she never liked them. But I guess she figured they were better than oils. Then, then we came to King Herod. And the Herdmans had never heard of him either. So Mother had explained that it was Herod who sent the wise men to find baby Jesus. Was it, was it him that sent the crummy presents, Ollie wanted to know? And Mother said it was worse than that. He planned to have the baby Jesus put to death. My goodness gracious, Imogene said. He just got born and already they're out to kill him? The Herdmans wanted to know all about Herod. What he looked like and how rich he was and whether he found... He fought wars with people. He must have been the main king, Claude said, if he could make the other three do what he wanted them to do. If I was a king, Lewis said, I won't let some other king push me around. You couldn't help it if he was the main king. I'd go be king somewhere else. They were really interested in Herod, and I figured they liked him. He was so mean, he could have been their ancestor, Herod Herdman. But I was wrong. Who's going to be Herod in the play, Leroy said. We don't show Herod in our pageant, Mother said. And they all got mad. They wanted somebody to be Herod so they could beat up on him. He, I couldn't understand the Herdmans. You would have thought that Christmas story came right out of the FBI files. They got so involved in it, wanted a bloody head to Herod. Now, they want a bloody head to Herod because they want to protect Jesus. They were worried about Mary having her baby in a barn, and they called the wise men a bunch of dirty spies. And they left the first rehearsal arguing about whether Joseph should have set fire to the inn or just chased the innkeeper into the next county. Oh my goodness. I guess it makes me think about this. You know, we just always think about this Christmas story and we read it and it's like, oh yeah, that's just, that's just what happened. Could you actually imagine taking a pregnant woman to a barn and having her give birth? We go to fancy hospitals with lots of doctors and nurses who was there to help Mary and Joseph? Just some animals? And then what do they do? They put them in a manger. So the herdmen, they're on the right track. They're like, man, this Herod's mad. Let's mean. Let's get him. Okay, guys. Chapter 5 and 6 tomorrow. Pull out your sheets. Let's take our little quick quiz. So this was the fun side we did already. Remember I gave you help with the fourth one? Number 1 for chapter 4. What was it that the herdmen children didn't know anything about when they came to the rehearsals. They didn't know anything about refreshments, they didn't know anything about school, they didn't know anything about Christmas, or they didn't know anything about pageant. I'll give you a clue. Don't pick pageant. Two, how did the Herdmans feel about listening to the Christmas story? They were bored, they were very interested, they were too busy talking to each other, they fell asleep. Number three, when Gladys when, oh, sorry, where did Gladys sleep when she was a baby? She slept in a, 
a bureau of drawers. She slept in Ollie's crib. She slept in a manger. She slept on the floor. I don't know why they had <coughs> in there. Number four. Why did the Hermans want King Herod to be be in the play? They all wanted they all wanted to play the part of someone mean. They wanted to see how Herod would act. They wanted to turn the play into something awful. They wanted to beat him up. Such a wicked king. All right, guys, that one's done. That one go back into your Tuesday folder. Here's the one that are moving from folder to folder to folder this week. We got these two from Chapter 4, Exposed and Manger. Now, I think Manger's the easiest one. I think we all know that the Manger was the large wooden feeding trough for the animals. That's an I. Exposed. Remember when we were talking about Mary? Mary was exposed to Joseph, which is a fancy old-fashioned word for be being married. All right, guys. Those two chapters are pretty long. We're probably going to finish this one up on uh, Thursday of this week because we only have one chapter for Thursday. But you can help add those in there. We definitely found the problem today. The Herdmans took over the pageant. You can add some of your characters here in your own time. Otherwise, we'll take a look at it on Thursday.